climb without help, we're always one misstep away from shuttering doors. And we see that in our business community. Something happens negative to a business and all of a sudden they're really in a bad situation. Next thing you know, they're no longer doing uh, what they were doing before. So I, I got this quote from uh, Charles Darwin. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really applicable. It is the long history of humankind that those who learn to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. And I think that's very applicable to the business world. Uh, one example that I took is the old bells. I know it's something that a lot of people are probably familiar with. So there was a time when the telephone companies were really a dominant force in the United States because it was one company. Well, what happened? Market forces came in and forced them to change. In their case, market forces were government. They basically came in and broke them up, said, look, you're going to be smaller companies. We're not going to allow you to be this giant. Well, did they throw up their hands and just say, oh, gosh, we're small now, we're done? No, they started to evolve. Uh, the bells broke up into little bells. Some of you may, may remember GTE. GTE became Verizon. Verizon continued to evolve. How many of you have Verizon Wireless? Right? The little bells didn't just give up. They began to move and change their business model with the time so that they could keep up with what was happening around them. Did it all work out? Well, AOL, no, not exactly. Sometimes partnerships or acquisitions don't go the way we want them to. But the, the point of that is they, they made the change necessary to become and keep up with market forces. When I came into the chamber originally, I did not come from a chamber background. I came from media. I worked for a Gannett newspaper. I worked for Time Warner Cable. And in those industries, change is constant. There's always acquisitions. There's always mergers. There's always partnerships. There's always leveraging you against your competition. And so when I got to learn kind of the history of chambers, it was a little bit of a curious model for me. And this certainly doesn't apply to every chamber. But for the most part, a lot of chambers, are they do a lot of the same things that they did 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. We change our logo, right? Maybe we freshen the event up, or we rebrand it, or we change it. But the core of what we do doesn't change a whole lot. And that is, frankly, unusual in the business world. Most of the businesses that we represent even on down to small businesses, don't operate like that. So for us to be able to do that and have sustained success through the years has been quite exceptional. That said, I get a call. I, get, I work with a lot of chambers around the country. I'm working with three right now in three different areas. One's in New York uh, that are looking at, hey, how can we partner? How can we merge? And usually by the time that I get that call, because I'm the guy that merges chambers, I'll have that on my tombstone, um, <laughs> By the time I get that call, they've already realized that they're in a place where they need to change. They need to evolve. And I, I hear a lot of the same themes when I talk to them. Uh, you know, there's only a couple of us. Uh, this is what we're known for. It's been hard for us to make changes. We don't have enough resources. We don't have enough money. We might lose our city contract. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. And so they're ready for this radical change. But the radical change is brought about because they haven't necessarily been keeping up with market changes that are going on around them, right? And so, you know, we may look back and say, okay, Josh, this model works for corporate America, but we don't necessarily think it works for chambers. And I would like to challenge that. So this is my chamber of commerce. Uh, in 2015, we were individual chambers. When I arrived in 2014, I looked around, there were 13 chambers in my area. I was like, well, this is weird, but it was working. Who was I to challenge it? Um, but I started looking at these partnerships. How can I cultivate them? How can, how can we work together? Uh, in 2015, we started looking at a merger. Eventually, we formed the Greater Coachella Valley Chamber of Commerce, which is a, uh, a regional chamber. The local chambers still exist uh, in partnership with the regional chamber. Uh, after that, we uh, brought on the Cathedral City Chamber of Commerce. We brought on Desert Ad Fed. Uh, we revived a chamber that had closed its doors, Desert Hot Springs Chamber. We brought them back. And we've had a lot of partnerships along the way. It's not just mergers. We've had a lot of partnerships. We work with an organization called Peer Community, which extends the digital reach of our members. Uh, we work with Leadership Coachella Valley, which is our uh, advanced learning platform for professionals. Uh, we, we partnered with the City of Indian Wells. We're not their chamber, but we work with them on State of the City and some other things. And this is just a fraction of our partnerships. We've opened in the last six months uh, a business incubator in partnership with economic development. We've partnered with the city of Coachella to open up a shared workspace. And so what's been the result? Well, if you go back to 2015, the combined budgets 
uh, or the budgets, you know, for the chambers that I was with was around 680,000. We had three employees. Today we have a $1.9 million budget and 13 employees. How does that change practically? Because it's not just about money, right? There's things that I do now that I could have never dreamed of doing before. Dave Kilby actually sees me now because I come up to Sacramento quite often. Why I'm there? I'm there advocating on behalf of my businesses. We have a political action committee. We have a, a very robust legislative platform. We hosted a gubernatorial forum where we had all the major candidates except for one come to our valley and speak to our members. We would not have dreamed of that back in 2014. It just isn't the place that we were in. So, Am I standing up here and saying, oh, you need to merge? No, you don't need to merge. You don't need to necessarily do that, but I do think you need to start looking for partnerships. So these are three examples that I brought from my local community. Uh, one of them is Rancho Mirage Chamber. I know Katie's here in the crowd somewhere. Uh, there she is. So Desert Elite is a, it's like a B&I group. Anyone have B&I groups in your area, right? So sometimes as chambers, we're like, uh, we don't like those guys. They're competition. They're going to take, take our members. Well, B and I, the Desert Elite group started in Rancho Mirage, I think about six months ago. Katie didn't say, oh my God, I want to stay away from those. She partnered with them. She embraced them. She actually helps to promote them. And I talked to her before I came here. I said, hey, how's that going? She said, I got 14 new members. Have they taken any of your members? No. Right? Power of partnership. Uh, Nona Watson, who runs the Palm Springs Chamber, she recognized a program called the Walk of Stars. It's been around for many years, but it wasn't hers. But what she recognized is, you know what? That aligns with my chamber's mission. I want that program. And so she started planting the seeds. I think it was two years ago. Uh, she actually brought them on board. And now that's a very successful part of her chamber's program. And it helps to make them famous, right? The three Fs. Does it make you funds? Does it make you famous? One that we did is back in the 2016, uh, my mid-year board uh, retreat, my board of directors told me, Josh, we want to be a bigger player in workforce development and education. Now, it would have been easy for me to run out and say, yeah, let's do it, right? I'm going to expend my energy and my resources and do that. I didn't need to. I looked across the desert and I said, who's doing this? Leadership Coachella Valley was already doing it, and they were doing it quite successfully. So I started engaging with them. I started talking with them. Today, we're partners. They fulfill that need for my chamber without us having to do it ourselves, and it's been a very successful partnership. And all three of these things have something in common. They had nothing to do with mergers which is why I want to get past that and say, think about partnerships. How can you manifest partnerships? Whatever that looks like for you in your chamber. OK, so if you decide, you know what, I'm in. How do I do it? What do I need to do? When you get back to your communities, start thinking about who are we today? Who, who out there is community partners that we could work with that meets our mission and what we're trying to accomplish as a chamber? Um, who do we share market space with? Who do we share common interests with? Who do we serve? Who serves us? These are all very basic questions that you can ask to sort of analyze your market and see who it makes sense for you to align with, to grow with, perhaps to merge with, whatever that looks like for you. But don't just think about today in the spirit of the speaker that was up here. Up here start thinking about 10 years from now. Who do we aspire to be tomorrow? Who do we look up to? When I came into this business, I looked up to Irvine Chamber, Long Beach Chamber. I didn't know anything about the three C's in 2014, but I knew intuitively that I wanted to do those things. And I knew I didn't have the resources to do all the things that I wanted to do. Uh, who is the gold standard? Who has money and resources? Who is famous? Who is somewhere we wish we could go? Or is there someone already in a place that you want to get to? When you get back to your communities, call them. Have a cup of coffee. Invite them to lunch. Bring along a few board members. Ask them to bring along some of their board members. Start a discussion. That's how these partnerships start. And you'll find that growth and getting to where you want to go becomes a lot easier. So I would challenge all of you with this closing statement. We all have to climb. We know that. Don't climb alone. Thank you. <laughs>